Welcome to my first video in my Nightmare on Elm Street review series as we get closer and closer to Halloween. Today is Friday the 13th, so this is probably the wrong franchise to talk about today. But fuck it, I've got my Freddy sweater on, so let's get right into this thing. Nightmare on Elm Street, the 1984 original version, of course not the bullshit 2010 remake, was a movie I grew up on as a kid. I watched all these movies countless times. This was stuff I was watching... Pretty much, I'd say, since I was four or five years old. And I was a huge horror fan, as I alluded to in my Chucky review series. Um, Freddy Krueger, even more so than the Chucky movies. Uh, I was a big, big Freddy fan and still am a big Freddy fan. And while Michael Myers is my number one slasher horror killer of all time, and Halloween is my favorite slasher horror film of all time, I will say that the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is the best when it comes to movie quality and consistency. There's only one or two really bad apples in this bunch of these seven movies, eight if you count Freddy vs. Jason, but for the most part, all of them are at least good or almost as good as the original. And that's a very interesting thing because every movie introduces new ideas and concepts because you have this whole dream world to work around and you can do a lot of fun stuff in that dream world and they do that with these movies so i have this a nightmare on elm street collection on blu-ray it's all seven of the freddy films not including freddy vs jason that one is on the jason box set but uh, i used to have the dvd set as well and when you put all the spines of the dvds in the box uh it creates Freddy, uh, you see the, Freddy's back, um, but I traded in my DVDs for Blu-rays. I'm just doing Blu-rays now, uh, so there you go. Let's talk about the original, Nightmare on Elm Street. Who hasn't seen Nightmare on Elm Street? If you have and you know who Freddy Krueger is, you know the plot of this movie, but if you've been living under a rock for some reason, Nightmare on Elm Street is about a group of teens who start realizing that they're having the same dream about this guy named Fred Krueger who has this glove with knives for fingers, he has burned skin and this dusty old hat and they keep on having these horrible encounters with him in this boiler room. And as the movie goes on, these teens start realizing that maybe these aren't just nightmares, maybe what happens in those nightmares actually happens in real life and it's up to these teens to uncover this mystery of who is Fred Krueger and why do none of the adults in the town want to talk about him? Where do you even begin talking about a movie like this? Uh, this is one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Uh, directed and created by the genius, the legend that is Wes Craven, the king of horror who sadly passed away two years back. This is also the movie that introduced the world to Johnny Depp. This is his first role. He plays the uh, teen character of Glenn. Uh, who is Nancy's boyfriend, Nancy being the main lead in this movie. And Nancy's played by Heather Langenkamp, the beautiful Heather Langenkamp, might I add. Um, and all the teens in general are very fun and unlikable, and they feel real. They feel like they're real people, not movie versions of teens. And that's what I love about Heather Langenkamp, she's not this, uh, you know, knockout all-star A-list bombshell. She's this very natural, innocent, normal-looking girl. Normal in a very beautiful way. I think she's absolutely beautiful. But you know what I'm saying? She's not um, Angelina Jolie, you know? she And it makes it seem real. I mean, at this point, you know, Nancy uh, Thompson, Heather Langenkamp's character, Nancy Thompson is to Freddy Krueger with Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Short is to Michael Myers. They go hand in hand. They are both iconic. And Heather Langenkamp brings everything to that role. She creates that role. It's usually said that the hero is only as good as the villain. Here I say the villain is only as good as the hero. And your hero, Nancy Thompson, is right there with Freddy Krueger. They are both iconic characters. And if we're talking about acting, of course I have to mention Robert England. Robert England is... Freddy Krueger. There is no other Freddy Krueger. Fuck that Nightmare on Elm Street 2010 bullshit. You cannot do a Freddy movie without Robert England. I mean, here he's more menacing. He's more scary. He doesn't become the uh, comedic one-liner that he does in the later movies, um, which I enjoy that for. I like the comedic stuff as well, but I also like this menacing stuff. It's a more scarier take of Freddy Krueger, but Robert England, whether he's being scary or or trying to go for comedy just absolutely knocks it out of the park. I mean, it's like Brad Dourif's performance as Chucky. You can't 
envision anybody else playing the role of those characters. Now Wes Craven came up with this movie because he read these stories about these uh, people who were afraid to go to sleep. They were afraid to have nightmares and they would stay up for about a week on end. And when they would finally go to sleep, they would die in their sleep and there would be no explanation to how they died. True stories. And um, using that in a movie, it's just, it's just such a scary concept. It's just naturally scary, the fact that we have no control in our sleep and we don't even know what dreams are you know that's the mystery that a mystery is very scary rather than knowing what's going on and that mystery if we don't know what the hell dreams are we don't know what nightmares are about and uh, that's what makes this movie work is that it's something that is just so easy to relate to rather than um, you know a, a Jason movie where you know you're not gonna ever come into contact with this demon evil being but dreams are something that we have that nightmares are something that we are accustomed to and are afraid of so it's a natural fear and uh, that's why I think this movie perseveres so much and stands the test of time because it's something that's just so human to us and something that we can all relate to these concepts of you know, when you die in your dream, you die in real life. That's a, a myth that a lot of people think about. And, uh, you know, this movie takes it a whole step further. And what I love is that this movie, you never know what's really happening. You never know if this is reality or a dream we're watching. In my theory, the last 30 minutes are all a dream. Once uh, Nancy gets that phone call from Freddy and he sticks his tongue out of the phone, to me... Because this movie sets up rules beautifully, Freddy can only exist in that dream world unless you pull him out into reality. Um, so he has no effect. There's no supernatural stuff happening in reality. And it sets up the rules perfectly. The sequels ruin it, but this movie sets it up perfectly. So the fact that Freddy's sticking his tongue out of the phone, that tells me that that's a dream. Even though it's supposed to be represented as reality. But that's what I love about it is that there's so much you can leave to interpretation of is what we're watching a dream or is what we're watching a reality and it puts that audience uh, in the shoes of these characters where we don't even really know what is real and what is dream and while this movie is still fantastic and great for the quality of the film itself i also have to talk about the historical aspect of this now in 2017 it's hard to imagine a world before freddy krueger um, but Freddy Krueger, once he came onto the scene, it's like he injected steroids into horror. I mean, he brought horror to a whole other level that it never was before. Not just horror fans loved and adored Freddy Krueger. I mean, everybody did. I mean, he was everywhere. He was a pop culture icon. He was the Elvis of horror. He was around in everything from marketing to TV to pop culture, everything. He had his own show. I mean... It's hard to really understand it uh, in 2017 how much of an impact that this movie had. I mean, without this movie, horror would be very, very different today. And while this did take a lot of things from older horror, this does take a lot of stuff from Halloween and Psycho and things like that. But this also innovative and it, 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 like, it took those ideas and like I said, it injected steroids into them and it just broke it out so that... Not just horror fans, but the general masses can uh, appreciate this stuff and be fans of this thing. Not to mention, Freddy Krueger also pretty much built a whole studio uh, production company. New Line Cinema was made off of the success of Freddy Krueger. Without Freddy Krueger, New Line Cinema would have never been a thing. Because they made all their money from the box office of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Which is a reason why that um, Bob Shea, the guy who was in charge of New Line Cinema wanted so many sequels with this thing because it always made them money. And can we talk about practical effects? The practical effects, while some might say it's dated, it's obviously from the 80s, I love them. I love the effects in this movie. The man-made effects, not this computer bullshit. I think of the scene where Nancy's sleeping and you see on the bedroom wall, you see this... Freddy silhouette coming out of the wall and trying to grab her with his, uh, you know, finger knives and his head poking. That's just such a great effect. And uh, all the other effects, I mean, when he slices Tina in the dream and we see her, we see the claw go down her chest and then it bursts open and all the blood gushes out. Johnny Depp's uh, famous death when uh, he gets sucked into the waterbed and all the blood starts gushing out of that. I mean, 
This movie is a special effect tour de force. And while it might seem dated to people today, that's what I love about this movie, the practical effects. And they are a product of their time, but not in a way that seems like, oh, this is just so ancient. It still lives up today watching it uh, a couple days ago. I was still amazed by these effects that people made these things. If I have to talk about negatives, all I could think about is I'm not a fan of the studio ending. Wes Craven wanted this one to end with uh, once Nancy turns her back on Freddy Krueger and takes away all the energy that she gave him, he disappears. And it pretty much sets the movie back to the first scene where it cancels everything so all her friends are alive, her mother's alive. The fact that she took away all his power reset everything and I love that. It's a happy ending. It makes that scene when she turns her back on him much more powerful. But the studio said, we want to make a franchise out of this thing. We want sequels. So they added that little jump scare ending where it looks like everything is reset. But in reality, we see the Freddy car and then Nancy's mom gets sucked into the window of the door and it's revealed that Freddy's still around and this is still a dream. Um, so, you know, it's like a pro and a con because I like the Wes Craven ending because it just it adds so much more impact to what Nancy does. And it's more emotionally satisfying you know, she turns her back and says, I, I take back all my energy I ever gave you. You're nothing. You're shit. And that kills him. But also, if we didn't have the studio ending, we wouldn't have sequels. And I love a lot of these sequels. So it's like, I don't know which ending I want. Also, I guess people could say that some of the music sounds uh, pretty dated. And it does. Um, not the main uh, Nightmare on Elm Street theme. That is fantastic and chilling. But some of the others, with that, that 80s synth stuff. But for me, that adds to the charm of this movie. I love that 80s stuff, that Stranger Things kind of synth vibe. Um, so for me, that's not a negative. But I could see how for some other people it might be. What else can I say about this movie that hasn't been said? You, Everybody knows everything about this movie at this point. I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street, for the fact that it's still enjoyable, that it's still very entertaining to watch, that it still holds up as a great, great movie. The fact that it introduced us into one of the most iconic horror slasher killers of all time in Freddy Krueger. And for the fact that this is such a historical movie, this had a huge impact on horror and revolutionized it. I have no other choice but to give this thing a 10 out of 10. This is a horror masterpiece, no doubt about it. I mean, and it created arguably, and in my opinion, the greatest franchise in horror history. So there you go. There's my review. On a little side note, I did go to California uh, about a month ago, and I was in L.A., and I visited the Elm Street house, the 1428 Elm Street where Nancy lives at. It's actually 1428 North Genesee Avenue. I believe that's how you pronounce it. But it's in L.A. and it's only a couple blocks away from where the end of Halloween takes place. Where uh, Tommy Doyle's house is where Laurie Strode is hiding from Michael Myers and running through the neighborhood. Which is a pretty interesting thing. But uh, there's the picture of it. There's me having a good time checking out all these horror locations. And the Elm Street house still looks the same. Which is uh, amazing to see that they haven't changed it up. So for people who are new to my channel, I also have a Chucky Child's Play review series that I did. I reviewed all those movies, including the new Cult of Chucky one, so definitely check that out. And stay tuned for my next video about Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, where things get pretty, pretty gay. Alright, as always, I'm the voice of movies, and I'll see you later.